Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself for 17 years, and the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society here at ASH 2022. I'm uh, Dr. Mark David Levin. I'm an internist hematologist working in the Netherlands in a community hospital near Rotterdam and also vice president of the Dutch CLL working group and performing a lot of trials with new drugs in CLL. And the Dutch working group has done a lot of really important research and I'm interested in this one paper that you're presenting at ASH here. And I'm going to read the title and then I'm going to ask you a little bit about it. Exploratory results of PET, CT, and residual lymph node fine needle aspiration of patients treated with first-line venetoclax and ibrutinib for CLL, SLL, and the first interim analysis of FAV2, HOVN, H-O-V-O-N, in the 158 Next Step trial. So there's a lot of acronyms in there, and there's a lot of things that patients might not understand, fine needle aspiration. So can you explain what that what you were doing in this trial, why you wanted to do this trial, what you were looking for? Yeah, so maybe it's uh, good to talk first about the design of the trial. Uh, so patients uh, receive ibrutinib and venetoclax for one year. And if they uh, had ibrutinib and venetoclax for one year, we look at the response. And those patients who have no uh, demonstrable disease anymore, we measure that by minimal residual disease they stop treatment after one year. And those who have still got CLL, we can still demonstrate CLL by uh, the, the uh, minimal residual disease technique. They get an intensification uh, for six months with a combination of ibrutinib and obinutuzumab. And so th this treatment, we think we try to get all patients into a minimal residual disease. It's also co called MRD negative status and we think that uh, getting all patients with CLL into a, this MRD negative status uh, prolongs progression-free survival and time to next treatment and we also hope that it will also uh, improve overall survival but we're not sure about that. So that's the design of the trial. Uh, and what we also learned is that the chronic lymphatic leukemia we always thought it was a bone marrow or blood disease, but we learned the last one or two decades that it's a lymph node disease. So these, these malignant cells, they thrive in lymph nodes. And um, what we most of the time we measure is uh, blood and bone marrow by, by biopsies or, or uh, to, to look, on, look on it uh, under the microscope. And we also take a CT scan to look at enlarged lymph nodes on CT scans. And what we often see is uh, by this treatment with uh, uh, all kinds of treatments for CLL that you get some remaining enlarged lymph nodes and we don't know what, 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 what happens in those lymph nodes. And so aside from this treatment we, we are testing out to get everybody into this MRD negative status, we also uh, want to observe what is happening in those lymph nodes. And there are a couple of techniques that you can use to look at those lymph nodes. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you can uh, do a CT scan, but you don't know if the enlarged lymph node has any malignant cells. And a PET CT scan uh, offers the po a possibility to look if there is uh, uptake in those lymph nodes, which we think are malignant cells but we're not sure. So, so a if PET CT, a CT shows the anatomy and it shows the size of the lymph nodes, the, the diameter of the lymph nodes and how big, how long they are. But the PET shows the metabolic activity and cancer tends to be more metabolically active. Though Even though CLL isn't that metabolically active of a cancer, it's still, those nodes would quote, light up and there's measures that the radiologists use to see, oh, and we, we know under this level, normal, under this level, CLL, under a real high level, it might have transformed into a worse cancer, Richter's or something. 
So just kind of setting that stage. So you're doing these PET, C, and the PET is always done with the CT together, and the, yeah. they overlap those so they can look at the two together. Yeah, so you can look at the enlargement, and you also can look at this metabolic activity. But we really didn't know quite well what the PET CT would look like in CLL. So just to start uh, taking PET CT, so we have 85 patients in this trial, just to start looking at these PET CTs in CLL, we learned if how active these lymph nodes are before start of treatment. So in, 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 in this uh, uh, poster I present here at ASH, we, we can look at the, the PET CT scans uh, in the first 30 patients in this trial, be, uh, with the, who, who got this PET CT at start and halfway the treatment. So uh, after a half, way, a half year of combination treatment. And uh, what, what we saw is that uh, almost all PET CTs are uh, lighting up, which we didn't expect. We thought it was quite an indolent disease, so it was not so metabolic active. But it is a metabolic active disease, so That's you can see so it on a PET CT, yeah. so we didn't know that. And what we also observed is that halfway the treatment, uh, almost in all patients, 90% of patients, the, this met metabolic activity declines. So 90% of the patients don't have a metabolic active lymph nodes of halfway the treatment. And, um, but despite there's no metabolic activity, in uh, more patients, the li these lymph nodes keep on being enlarged. So in this, uh, the patients who had these enlarged lymph nodes halfway the treatment, we uh, punctured the, the lymph nodes, uh, if possible. So we, we didn't do it if the lymph nodes were quite deep uh, inside, but if they were quite superficial, we could uh, easily... So if it was like in the armpit yeah. or the groin yeah. or even in the neck where yeah. you could, um, somebody could put a needle into it and suck some of the tissue out and look at it under a microscope, but if it was deep in the abdomen or the pelvis, you would leave it alone. Yeah, so we, because of safety, we, right. we didn't uh, do that. But so, so we were able, so of the 30 patients, there were nine patients who still had enlarged lymph nodes and we were able to uh, puncture them. Um, and we looked under it on the microscope and we only saw in five of those, those nine punctures, we could see cells. So, so we could only say anything about cells in, the, in, the, in, the, in those lymph nodes. So despite the activity on the PET CT scan was lowered. We could demonstrate in four or five of those lymph nodes still active CLL. So the sensitivity of a PET CT scan is not a hundred percent to demonstrate that the lymph nodes do, do not harbor any CLL anymore. Well, that's very interesting because I've always thought that, you know, some one of the things that will happen with patients is they'll have these massive lymph nodes that are, let's say, 10 centimeters, and they shrink to 1.6 centimeters, which isn't considered normal. 1.5 mm -hmm. is normal. But I've also heard, like the NIH and Dr. Wiesner and his group did some biopsies on these, and they didn't find CLL in yeah. them. A lot of it was just scar tissue. But yeah. what you're saying is, at least at this time point, there's still active CLL in, in some of those nodes. Yeah, so with this treatment, and in, in, uh, once again, in, in four of nine, we didn't see any cells. Uh -huh. So maybe there's in a, uh, this uh, um, inactive tissue. Uh -huh. But in, in, in five of them, we, we saw cells, and in four of five, we, we demonstrated CLL cells. Wow. And we even were able to look at uh, how many CLL cells that were, and the number of CLL cells in the lymph nodes are always higher than in the blood. In all, all the lymph nodes we, we demonstrated. So the concentration of CLL is higher in the lymph node than in the blood. So that, that, that also demonstrates that CLL is a lymph node disease and not a blood or bone marrow disease. Well, it would seem to me and I, that this would have significant implications in terms of how we should be managing patients and what we should be doing. Could you, uh, uh, it's always dangerous to ask the doctor to speculate because I'm asking you to go beyond what the data is, but what, what kind of things are you thinking about? What kind of further research do you want to do? And I know this is early on, but this is 
very interesting. Yeah, but so what we set out to do is to measure these PET CTs later on too. Okay. And uh, if patients don't get really into deep remission, so still uh, keep on being MRD positive, then we intensify the treatment with albinutuzumab. And we also make a PET CT afterwards again. And we, uh, we can compare uh, in these different treatments, we can c compare these PET CT results. And the way we look at the PET CT at this moment is positive or negative, but there's, there's a whole uh, subti subtlety uh, in between. And we will measure, measure with, uh, with uh, special techniques uh, how deep these uh, remissions will be on PET CT. And what, what we did not report here, but we, we will also uh, look into, it's, it's also, also very interesting, is so you can measure malignant cells in the blood. Uh, and uh, very often it's in these new treatments, we don't find any malignant cells anymore in the blood or in the bone marrow. But there's a new technique, it's called cell-free DNA, and that measures only parts of DNA, malignant DNA. We can measure malignant DNA. And we want to compare these results with these PET CTs, we, because we think if there are still any uh, malignant cells in the PET CT available, then also this cell-free DNA in the blood will be measurable. And maybe in the future we can, we don't have to do PET CTs, but we can still use this cell-free DNA technique to see if there's any CLL cells left in the body. But I will come back next year to, to report on that because we, we did that for the next interim analysis. And of course the other piece is how does this correlate with the clinical outcomes? Because just because there's a little bit of disease in a lymph node doesn't mean that you might not have an extremely long remission. No, that's true. That's true, so we don't know that. So we will, we will look into that and also compare it to other trials uh, to see if those patients who will get a normal PET CT or a, uh, an MRD negative status do it better than those who won't get into that state. Uh, so I don't know that, but, but we think that the deeper the remission is, the better the outcomes are for the patients. And what we are talking about now is uh, the, the, the deepness of the remission, but what we also learned is that your immunity gets better if the CLL is very deep in remission. So we also think that uh, patients with a deep remission thrive better. They have less infections, for example, but also our own body has this uh, uh, possibility to keep malignant cells under control if your immunity is good enough. Right. And, and we see in CLL that the T cell function is worse in patients with active disease, but if they are in remission, we saw that in other trials, that your T cells become better. So we also will measure that to see if it is deep remissions in the blood, the bone marrow, but also in the lymph nodes will enhance the life of the patients with less infections and longer, longer durable remissions. Well, this is so important research uh, to be doing and looking at and very inventive. Um, I have a million other questions, but um, I, I, I'm excited actually to hear about the, um, the free DNA that you're looking at too, because as a patient, you don't want to get too many PET scans and CTs because of the radiation exposure, that, that's a risk, but it's, uh, it's, it's a very interesting. Any final thoughts or anything you want to share with patients on this research? No, I, I think it's very interesting that we set out to do not s such a big trial, so only 85 patients, but we will learn a lot about uh, the how CLL really works in patients. So we always look at outcomes like progression-free survival and sometimes this MRD negative status, but there are quite crude ways to look at outcomes of patients. And now we are looking at it more subtle to see really what, what happens in the dynamics of the blood, the bone marrow, and the lymph nodes. And we will learn a lot about that. And there are coming many new treatments. And some of them work more on the blood and the bone marrow, and some work more on the lymph nodes. And we, we can also maybe in the future see what kind of treatment is best for which patients using 
selfie DNA, MRD techniques, PET CT scans. So we're, so we're trying to figure that out. Dr. Levin, this is fascinating and really original and important uh, research to think about these three different components of where the CLL lives. I'm very grateful for what you and your colleagues in the Netherlands are doing. Uh, and thank you very much for sharing this important research from ASH 2022. You're welcome.